Hey, we're here at uh, Copper Canyon subdivision um, doing concrete, doing some post tension concrete slabs for uh, uh, some tract homes for Providence, Providence homes. I work for Alamo Concrete. My name is Chris, and we're just going to try and explain as you know, in as, as best possible, uh, briefly what a post-tension slab is and uh, the benefits of it and some of the specifications of a post-tension slab. And so one of the first things you're going to notice behind me is all these cables and that is, uh, that is your typical post-tension concrete slab. Uh, post-tension meaning that later, uh, typically about a week after the concrete is poured, they'll tighten these cables. And the way they do that is with a hydraulic jack and on one end of the cable you'll have a, a pocket former like this and the cable runs through your form um, on the live end and this is your live end over here you can see the cable actually running through the form and then you'll have a dead end where you don't have the cable running all the way through but at each um, at, at each anchor location you're going to have some reinforcement bar which is called a hairpin a number three piece of rebar bend in a u-shape uh, to give it a little more strength at those at those uh, locations so when you tighten the cable you have um, a cone of, uh, of structural strength here because there's an incredible amount of uh, tension that goes on this cable uh, when, when you go to tighten it um, I don't know the exact specifications but it's a lot the, the cable will stretch um, maybe 8 to 10 inches on these long runs and after they do that, what um, the thinking behind all of this is that you have lateral inward pressure on the entire slab. You'll notice that these cables are about three feet apart, and every one of them is going to have some incredible pressure uh, pulling inward on this slab. Something a little different about these slabs out here is that you'll you have a you have a footing a perimeter footing which is uh, typically about three feet deep these are actually a little extra deep but average average depth is about three feet of perimeter footing and the engineers deemed uh, that was what needed to be done with this type of soil and so you've got a lot of concrete just going in the ground before you're uh, dealing with the actual slab the rest of the slab is ten and a half inches thick so quite a quite a solid slab and then on top of that you have the, the cables so I don't know anything else anything more that would be uh, in the way of details unless you wanted to maybe Google post tension cables and you'll see actually uh, a little more detail to it but that's the thought process behind a post tension slab is you eliminate the footing the stem and the uh, and the four inch slab and it's a big monolithic pour. It's one piece that can't really, uh, it's not ever going to, it's not ever going to heave. It, it, it may crack, but it'll, it'll, the There'll be small will cracks. Together. Yeah, and it, it won't Just heave, like it won't hairline. separate, and uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a better product for a, for a home because you're not going to have doors and windows jamming later, but there's just a lot of benefits to it. A little more expensive in, in the outset, but a better uh, product and um, just a lot stronger foundation. So there you have it. Thank you, Chris. All right, we're here a week or so later doing the tensioning on the actual cables. And so Dennis has taken a couple still shots of uh, the anchorage there at the, the live end of the cable. These are the wedges that go into the actual anchor and so I'm going to put them in and then you can see the teeth on there you put them you put them actually kind of in the socket and you tap them in kind of a little bit snug to get them started and here is the hydraulic this is the hydraulic jack that grabs a hold of the cable slips on like that that actually is the teeth that grabs the cable. You kind of put that in snug. You come over here to the to the hydraulic 
pump, it has a meter on here, and we we tighten that up to 5,300 psi, which is a certain amount of kips, and you can see there 33 kips equals 5.3 psi. That's we we get the dial up to 5,300, and then when we get the dial up to that pressure we reverse the jack and those wedges are shoved in there and they clamp down on the cable and then it should forever have tension on that cable so that, that's the last procedure and then we cut the cable and patch the hole it's all done there you have it